everyone, it's me, official. So excited to be here and can't wait for your questions. Well, first of all, congratulations, me, official. Um, it is official. You are now <laughs> a Chelsea lady. Um, take us through your time at Tigris and, and then talk us through the, the, the you know, the, the transfer talk, the opportunity talk of going to a place like Chelsea. Yeah, so it's been a crazy journey just from UCLA to Tigris itself. Um, first professional club, um, there comes a lot of challenges as a, as a professional soccer player that I had to adapt to. Um, first, the language, um, new team, getting to know everyone. Luckily, Tigris was an amazing first professional club for me um, when I got there. It was warm welcomes, um, trying to get me as comfortable as I could to the culture. Um, it's definitely uh, a different culture from the U.S. to here, just very family-oriented, um, very passionate about soccer, just like I am. So it was crazy seeing how the fans and the team talk about soccer. It's something that I wasn't used to in the States. Um, just the tenacity, the passion um, was something that I had to get used to because of uh, you know, the performance, the um, just how I play. Everyone's watching under um, a high scope. Um, their last 10, their striker recently left. So um, it was a lot of pressure as well as pressure from the States on, hey, this league is not good enough. Um, this this league is below every, every other league in the world. So I had that kind of in the back of my mind. But as a soccer player, you just have to roll with the punches and, and keep doing what you've always been doing, working hard, um, always staying true to your your morals, your values of, of being a soccer player and being a person. Um, so I have a strong, um, high value of family and hard work. So it really got me through Tigris and um, that whole journey. As a soccer player, you know, it is – a lot of adaptability how does this team want to play how do I fit in this in this league and the club and because it was so easy to get into the team I was able to play so well um, that was a big kudos to the club to my teammates um, for integrating me uh, the right way quickly after the first season um, I started getting really comfortable I was starting to play how I wanted to play um, who I identify with as a soccer player so that helped a lot with this big thing with Chelsea recognizing me in this league. So it was it was huge. It's huge to be seen from a club that I've supported since I was nine years old, since I was eight years old. It's always been my team uh, for a long time. Just it's funny because um, my family, like my dad, was a Liverpool fan and my brother was a big Arsenal fan. So we always had that. In those arguments like who's the better team but I've always stuck with Chelsea so um it's kind of ironic that that's the team that wanted me um in the end so it's been uh, a dream come true yeah David let's talk a little bit about what you've seen in Mia in the growth from college through this first professional team that she's you know played for in, in Mexico yeah you know I mean on my side and and you know, I mean, one thing I will say, and I must must applaud you, you Mia, and just the whole family, right? Um, I mean, my brother Pat has done an awesome job, and it's it's and you know one thing I love about your father, I love about my brother is that you, you mentioned the word you know adaptability and his ability to adapt, but also uh, the accountability that he puts on himself, and also the end of the day is is a very good forecaster, and with my journey from what I'm seeing. The, the the ability to also uh, deal with adversity mm -hmm. uh, and, and also transitioning. The one thing is that, I me, mean, I remember we had these conversations, you was at the U15, and it was just so much, right? So much, the adversity that was going on was so much. Mm -hmm. And the conversations, uh, whatever conversations I'm having with me, are easy. They're usually by a text message, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't say nothing to her about the game unless she asks Right, mm -hmm. and I'm very, very respectful. And as a pro coach, sometimes we could jump in. Yes, I can. Oh no, I say nothing. But it's the ability to adapt, but also transition. Um, when I tell you, 
I, I, I enjoyed me. I enjoyed even watching what you have accomplished in, in, um, in Tigris. And I'll tell you why, because it's bigger than the game. I know we talked about this. Mm -hmm. It was a culture shift. I don't know if people understand that the, uh, those adversities and things you had to deal with of the unknowns, right? Mm -hmm. When you're going into Mexico mm -hmm. and you're on this, this professional women's team, but you empower them. You, you, you empower them through just the way you are and the way you carry yourself. So, so and, and, and Arvo, that's what I saw. Uh, I actually have a question for her. You don't mind me asking the question, no, 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 too. I don't mind yeah. asking. Because we talked about this, and just this... Uh, Mia, we have a lot of young people in Bermuda, mm -hmm. uh, and especially when we're doing the women's, you know, the young women. And you talked about one of the things is that where a lot of our players, and even males and females, they stop at that adversity, right? Uh, that ability to go through hard work and pain. And I want to know, like, what did that look like, right? What did that look like for you? Like having to uh, a, a mental was it was it more of a mental shift that you had to make to get through those adversities when you're transforming like going down to Tigris like you mentioned you got so much things that's going to be coming at you. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? Because I'm trying to show young people from you especially on you're going to have to overcome right. You're going to have to really put your head down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a big question, and um, I get this question a lot because it was a big shift. Um, just like the adaptability, like you talked about. But I think getting past that hard point is what drives you as a player. That's that's the, the question. How far do you want to go? Like, what what is your end game? Because mine is to be the best player in the world. And that's in the back of my mind. And I'm willing to go through anything to get to that point. So I think it's a big mental uh, question that you have to ask yourself as a soccer player. Like, is this just for fun? Like, do you just enjoy being around with your teammates, the social yeah. part? Because you can get lost in that, too, as well. Um, what What do you want as a soccer player? Like, do you want to become the best? How far do you want to go? Do you want to be on the national team? Mm. Do you want to be the best player on your team? Or do you just want to support them? So I think for me, what got me through the adversity and everything is also where I've came from. My family sacrificed a lot. Like, this is just not, oh, this came easy. Um, my mom taking me every day to training that's 40 minutes away as a kid from – you 10 through when I was 18 going to college. So um, there's bigger things. There's, there's bigger um, outside of soccer that mm -hmm. I have in the back of my mind as well. Like my family is the most important thing to me. Um, and that on top of me wanting to be the best soccer player in the world is what got me through. Um, what do I want to be as a person, mm -hmm. as a player? Who is looking up to me? I know that my journey is not just for myself, but other players. I'm paving a way um, for younger female male players that, you know, anything is possible if you have the right mindset. It's just, like I said, I think it depends on how far you want to go in the sport. And that's a big question you have to ask yourself. Sure. I'm glad you mentioned national team uh, as the Women's World Cup is underway. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think you have to do to get in this U.S. team? <laughs> what's, what's left for you to do? I think what left for me to do is to keep being myself. I think I already have it. I already know mentally that I, I can be there right now in the World Cup. I really wanted to. I have the mindset. I have the physicality. I have my how I play. I think that, I mean, I could personally help the team. But at some point, you can't control everything. And that's kind of what me, my family, my management have talked about. It's Some things are out of your control. And you have to continue to stay true to yourself, believe in yourself that, hey, me not being on the national team is not my fault. Like there are some things that I can't control. Mm -hmm. I think if I continue to do what I do, if I continue to want to grow and continue to want to be a better person, I think my time will come. And me and my dad were just talking about it. Like everyone is on a different timeline. We've always trusted the process. Mm -hmm. Now I think not, any, not everything is meant to come like this. And it's for a reason. And I think that, um, how I've grown into this sport, how I've came up is just leading to that. So I just, I'm still believing myself. I'm still continuing to do what I do, work hard, um, have positive thoughts and just know that it will come. Yeah, yeah. So so style of play, you, you, you've been a Chelsea supporter, you say it all your life. So obviously when they come in, no matter who else is coming in, you're leaning towards Chelsea, but style of play, 
Does, uh -huh. it, does the system they play suit your game? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people and they say that that's the reason why you were scouted is because the way that you play. I'm not like a usual nine who sits high, who um, can just finish. I can do that as well, but I think that my style of play is so versatile. I'm able to adapt to what the game is asking for. Is my team being high pressed? Do I need to drop low to be a, a source for them to, to build up, to get to the final third? Um, can I stay high? Can I stretch? Can my team be able to build out without my help and then make those runs in behind? Um, I think that's a, a big part of my play is reading what the game is asking for and then executing that as well as finishing. Cause as a nine, you have to finish. And I think that um, that's just what I do. I think that I always want to win. I'm a big competitor and I'm glad that, you know, I'm a person that is supposed to be winning the games for the team. Mm. Now, Obviously, this will be one of the first times um, you've played in a winter in the U UK, uh, which is something totally different. I mean, you, you were playing over in California, San Diego. You played in Mexico, all hot places. Yeah, very hot, yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the things you know you're going to have to do to adjust to those frozen temperatures, training and playing? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the big thing is like warming up, you know, if, when it's warm, your body is already, you know, just to the temperature, you're good to go. Like, you know, I could, I could warm up for like 15 minutes. I'm good. I'm good. Like the weather is warm and everything. So I think uh, playing in the winter, it is nice because as well, the heat, you know, it's hard to play soccer as is when it's hot, when it's humid, you're sweating, your jersey's getting heavier. Um, so that would be a nice perk as for playing in the, in the winter, just being cold and I can, you know, probably last longer and not get as tired as quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think my body is going to have to get used to um, the conditions because, you know, your body wants to be warm to be able to sprint, to be right. able to cut. So I think just being cautious of that um, will be important. Mm -hmm. well, and, and David, let me let me ask you, because uh, you, you've obviously uh, had a stint in the UK. What advice could you give me about those warming ups, those staying warms and, 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 and stuff like that? <laughs> Oh, I'm still trying to get warm. Listen, I told Goda, me, me, I, I, listen, I told Goda one of the reasons, I have many reasons on why I shifted over to the U.S., but I just remember like, warming up, I got gloves, I tried everything, my toes are cold. I said, you know, I'm done. I, I like, I got to a point where, I, so I can't give her no advice. I can't, I mean, I can't even help you. Yeah, yeah listen, she's got to do this. She has some soccer warmers and stuff on. Yeah. yeah, I got a question for you because, I, you know, as a, as, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, Hope you don't mind because I'm I'm thinking of we have a lot of young players in Bermuda. Yeah. What I want to ask you is that as a professional coach, I'm like I'm in my scouting mode now. Um, have, have that connection because we talked about shifting, right? When you make a shift into a culture shift in Tigris, now we have a culture shift right in England now, right? We mm -hmm. we, we were talking about Chelsea. I'm now got to become a Chelsea fan because you know what's in this house, Earl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's in this house. Liz is. He kind of threw it because she went from menu to Arsenal, but you know, it's a menu people here, yeah, I would say. But like shifting, like what, what two things is kind of with with the coach, right? Was you able to kind of um, connect? And I don't know if you have yet, but able to connect, right, with her to find out is that what that culture, right? What's that shifting culture going to go into? Mm -hmm. And also, anything you're expecting with the culture shift from when you went to Mexico to now in England, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the answers, yeah, but it'd be cool that, you know, getting to share that because I think it's very important, right? Because I'm huge on coach-player bonding relationship. Mm -hmm. And we know right away as pro coaches is that we have to make sure is that we're delivering and being able to transcend everything to our players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually was on a call with Emma for like, I think, 30, 40 minutes, um, you know, just trying to connect, like you said, on our values and and what drives us as people as as us you know just being a person in soccer and she first said to me is that hey these players are bugging me about bringing players who want to compete who want to be the best and and that's where i was able to connect with her um mm -hmm. we are both very competitive um i've learned we both want to win we both want to strive to be better as people as soccer players and I think that is what caught my my eye the most because, like I said, I want to be in an environment where I want to grow, where I want to be challenged, where I want to be 
push the limits to become the player that um, I want to look back and be like, hey, like I, I did everything. I put myself in a situation where um, I can be the best soccer player as I can. And I think that connection is just so important because you don't know what coach's end games are. Um, for her, it was about, you know, growing a player. She knows how young I am. She knows that it's going to take time for me to adapt um, to the team, to the squad. But she's like, with time, with trust, and with that winning mentality, you will be surrounded by players who are just like you. And I think that connection was the most important to me because everyone wants to win. We don't want players who are lacking, who are not going to go the extra mile, the extra yard for each other because there is that one end game. That's, that's to be a champion as a team. And I think that was a big connection that we shared. Obviously, we talked about family and how important that is. And just your morals is very important, like I talked about earlier, your values, what drives you. And I think that was a big piece for me. Sure. Now, the schedule's been released, and obviously your first game up is Tottenham at home. Mm -hmm. um, how excited mm -hmm. will you be to, to, to walk out on that field uh, in the blue, um, you know, representing your childhood team on October 1st? It's going to be a dream come true. It's going to be uh, – when I first got there in London and seeing Stanford Bridge was just – it was so surreal. I mean, I couldn't believe it. So I just can't imagine my first my first game there, being with the team, um, you know, being on that pitch. It's just going to be uh, something I probably can't describe in words. Sure, sure. One other thing, because uh, uh, I um, went to the Chelsea Ladies website and I went to their Twitter page, and it resembled the Tigris changing room. It's a lot of antics go on in their in their training sessions and and in the you know after games and so forth that bond that that bond that how important is it for you to be in a, an environment where everybody's working for everyone i think that's the biggest thing in a team if you don't have synergy if you don't have that that bond that tightness like you will not win like it one person can mess up the whole culture like i've learned that um in many teams and i think that i've, I've watched their their stories too and they seem like a very tight um knit team and I think that's so good to know going into the into the team that that's important to them too. It's important to be a team. It's important to treat each other like the way that you want to be treated. And that is what wins championships is that culture, is that like-minded mentality that me and Emma talked about, being competitors, being wanting to surround yourself with players and people like yourself. And it was cool because when I first got to London, that was one of the first things that the communication person said to me is that you're going to love the team just as people. They are so nice. Um, if you need any questions, they will answer anything for you. Um, they will help you navigate this transition for you. And that's, that's like the most important thing to me. Just like Tigres, like they, when I first came, like they came with, you know, a warm welcome. And that's important as a soccer player to feel like you belong because you'll, you'll play like that as well. For, for the young people, um, you know, you, you talked about your mom driving you 40 minutes to training as a young uh, a U10 and so forth. So you have those you have those people that are going through that right now. Parents are taking their children, uh, you know, driving time after time for training. What advice would you have for the parent um, to make sure that that the, the child is getting, I, I would say, the best advice or, or the best time of of given the opportunity to train and play? Yeah, I think for the parents, it's just continuing to let them know that this is fun. Like my parents, when I kept going to training, like if I didn't want to go to training, they wouldn't have taken me. Mm. Um, it's about reading what your kid wants and, and kind of picking their brain out, like how far do they want to go? But the ultimate thing for me was have fun. Like my parents did not pound me on every little pass, every missed opportunity or a shot or whatever. Like they did not care about, about that. Like they just cared about me having fun because that's what's going to keep you in the game. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to allow the player to be who they are on the field. So I think that's like a big advice for me is just to let your kid be like who they want to be. And as long as they're having fun, then everything will work out. Yeah. David, you say you speak with uh, me a lot. Uh, via text, and you don't talk about the game itself, but I know you you often ask her, um, you know, to to mention or to to make comment about your, your young people that that you um, inspire in Bermuda. Uh, what are some of the things that she's been able to um, pass on to your young people 
that has encouraged them to to stay involved and possibly get others involved in in soccer yeah it's been great um so you know with mia and you know big fish of energy uh, mia's brand as well you know the mf brand it, it's been awesome because and we've been very mindful of making sure is that when we're merging together uh we're really making sure we get both of us getting the language right uh, and then young players um, with our brand, um, you know, with Adidas Global, the brand helping out supporting with the jerseys. But it's not just that, right? Those are tangible things that they can feel. It's about uh, connecting with them and what she's bringing, uh, the conversation having with our young people at BFLA, but not just BFLA, all young people in Bermuda. Uh, and that's the, the direction where we're going. It's just continue to empower them. Uh, give them the drive. What does adversity look like? Hard work, uh, getting through hard work, you know, feeling some pain, then you get some success. And not everything, uh, Mia, you mentioned it, we or your father talked about, where everybody's driving or riding a different vehicle. You could be, you know, to get into that final destination. And you said it, and I know these are the things that we are about uh, and with Mia's support. What's happening, and one of the biggest things is that how we're connecting with Mia's brand, uh, and those big fish of energy, and also the MF brand, is that you know what we're doing, you know, big fish, is that uh, the kind of vehicle for the pathway, right? That pathway vehicle is that, yes, we know in Bermuda, we're driving through what, uh, uh, you know, Mia's about, her language, her drive, right? Uh, perseverance. But then it's the pathway, what's next, is the biggest part on where their support's coming in. And this is a part of the pathway. And as you said it many times here, right? You must understand and learn how to adapt. You have to learn how to adapt. And the one thing me is that, and what uh, me and your father, when we went to Bermuda for this, for different tournaments is that it's so competitive. And they get competitive sometimes, I feel, in the wrong areas. And we have to make sure is that what we are doing is helping through me and everybody's working together to make sure they know, we know what, results and success look like right it's gotta come through the first thing laying the foundation she mentioned it for that development that for that um you know i'm excited i mean i'm i'm i can't tell you enough i'm proud of you i know sometimes she reads the test i go jeez uncle david give me a break give me a break but i'm gonna tell you like when i tell you i'm fraud i have no, i have my own little watch party sometimes <laughs> the game savers come on late and i got my own little one i said watch party today and it's it's cool but you know what i i, I the one thing i i love about uh, Mia, and first of all, I'm very proud of you. What I do love about you is just you're very humble. Uh, and if anything that any young person and even parents said, you know, we know your journey. We know what you want. You want to be the best player in the world. And, you know, but I can, I, I can feel it. You wake up and I know your motivation every morning, right? You wake up loving this game and keep grinding. You said two things that was very important is that your family. You said your family, and the other thing is that listen, you know, you want something out, you got to go get it. You got to be willing to go get it, and I applaud you for that. So, Earl, you know, I can, I mean, I'm excited. Listen, I'm not gonna watch the game when you play Man U. Uh, <laughs> I thought you said I'm not gonna watch. Little, I, I, I thought you said he was changing teams. I, 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 I thought you said he was changing <laughs> teams. Didn't he say that, Mia? He said he was changing yeah, teams. <laughs> He did. He did. Um, no, but here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh. Because I know I don't like my team losing. Okay. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is just, I know the highlights and I know my, I'm, my head's going to hurt me because I know what this is going to look like, right? I'm going to be waiting for the highlights coming and be like, okay, here we go. I'm going to have a choice. I'm going to, for that game, I will let you know, I will have on my blue because I'm not connected to no menu. I will have on my blue. I may not watch the game, but I'm going to have my blue on. I have my blue on. But now it's, it's, listen, I'm proud of you, you know, and, and you have all the support with, uh, girls in Bermuda, young girls, the ones that we have control of, and I'm excited on this journey. Yes. Um, you know, listen, I talked to Goda. I, I talked to Goda, right? And Goda was like, hey, you know, you know, Goda's at Men's City, right? It's mm. Men's City. I said, Goda, what's happening? How's things going? He says, yeah, well, I heard some news. He wouldn't say nothing to me. <laughs> I'm just nodding my head. I just said, all right, buddy, I'll see you. I will watch that game, though. <laughs> oh, yes. So oh, I will be all over that game and watch those blue and blue just clash into each other. I'm gonna let you know. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, I'm putting bets on that game. I'm, I'm letting you know. I, I know. And listen, 
I'm going all out because I need to get go to back for many times and many days and we as young he tortured me. So that's something I'm letting you know. I need to fly up for that one, Earl. But listen now, let me get it back to your knees. You can get it back to your knees. Come on, man. I have to. I have to listen, man. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah. You are my you you are my hope. You are my hope. Just put some licks on men, CD, please for me. Go to listen, go to beat up menu, right? He not even call me no more. It's like expected. I said, okay, I'll get you. I said, oh, I'm coming. Now, now I can talk some smack after yeah, he yeah. gets released. So, Mia, how pleasing was it that your final game with Tigris, you were able to lift the trophy and score two goals in the first leg that kind of set it all up? Yeah, it was the best way to go out. I mean, I knew going in the risk of me playing in those games as well knowing that uh, these these could be my last games with uh, this great team that, that started my professional career. Um, it was about staying calm and not going out of the box and doing too much. Um, like I said, it's just like knowing who you are as a player and just playing with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that allowed me to relax, to enjoy the moment. And like I said, having fun. And I think, you know, you have to have a little luck as well. I think the soccer gods, you know, bless me with those moments, those opportunities, and I just put them away. And I'm just so um, grateful that that I can be able to end on a high note with the best team. We just lost them. We got knocked out in the semis by America. So that was on the back of our mind as well. Like, hey, these are the champs. And um, I had no doubt that we were going to do that um, and then end it home with an assist to um, Jackie. Mm -hmm. So it was the best feeling to lift that trophy right at the end and knowing that, hey, like I ended on the highest note that I could. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I want to wish you all the best. I know David has already said he is proud. I'm pretty sure your entire family <laughs> is proud of what you've been able to accomplish and what's next for you uh, at Chelsea. So I wish you all the best, all the success this coming season. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll be watching and keeping contact and and uh, making sure uh, the ball ends up in the back of the net, whether it's an assist or it's a goal from you. Um, yeah. But just, you know, put your head down, do what you got to do. Uh, make make your national team notice you even more. Uh, uh -huh. Keep being yourself. And that's what you say. Yeah. Just keep being yourself. Okay? Thank you. All right. I appreciate that. Yes. All right. Listen, all I'm going to say, Earl, is that, uh, you know, Bermuda, listen, I'm excited. My young girls on in Bermuda, you know, I'm glad for the connection. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. We have everything that you've done for us, you know, the, the young, the young uh, players, the BFLA, and even and just what it's going to do to come. Uh, and and we just need to in Bermuda or take advantage uh, because these opportunities don't come. They don't come right this often. And proud of you, you know, the country is proud of you. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing these games. Listen, I'm pumped out, Earl. Do you have a team, Earl? No, I don't have a team, David. Earl, you are not. He can't even say me. He can't even say nothing. What did he you can't say? even say he's going to support somebody else, right? He, he got what did you say? I didn't, hear, I didn't know what you said. Yeah, you, you cut out a little bit. Yeah, you cut okay. out. Okay, no, I said I, no. I asked, do you have a team, Earl? And I said no. And I said now you are Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's already Chelsea. He's Chelsea. I I, I only wear blue, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's done. It's All done. Right, man. All, All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And again, congratulations, Mia. We look forward to you um, doing, you know, the, your family and your friends very proud uh, in that mm -hmm. Chelsea outfit. So again, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Cool.